welcome to this workshop on prayer. Um, prayer is more than just talking to God. Basically, just on prayer, essentially. You guys have two handouts I gave you. One is about four basic types of prayer. You can it. And then there's a uh, little card that has four categories, uh, four types of prayer on it. And this uh, workshop is, is fairly simple. Uh, I guess I'll start off just by kind of asking, um, has everybody prayed before in their life? Is there anybody who has not prayed before? Now, you don't have to answer this verbally, but if you guys had to rate from 1 to 10 how uh, developed your prayer life is, I'd like you to think in your mind, what would you rate your current prayer life? How avid of a prayer are you? How much do you really understand about prayer and the necessity for it? Where would you guys rate yourself? Like I said, don't need to, no need to speak it, but in your mind, think between 1 and 10, where would you rate your current prayer life? Uh, yep, we're all here. Yep. Uh, I hope that this workshop uh, allows you guys to, if you're an avid prayer, great. Maybe this gives you a little insight into how to diversify some more in your prayer. If you feel like you struggle with prayer uh, in, in some of the mechanics of it or the attitude and heart stance of it, I hope that this then helps you uh, kind of like grow to the next level. So we're going to go through the four types of prayer. And as we go through these four types, we're going to pause. I'm going to give you guys a prompt. And I'm going to want you to fill out this card. And then at the end of the workshop, I hope to be able to give you guys uh, 15 minutes where we're going to go outside. And I want you all to take your card. And I want you to practice some of these types of prayer. OK, first, uh, first type of prayer your full page handout. Uh, now there are more than four types of prayer in the Bible. These are just some, these are just four of the largest type, most prominent types of prayer in the Bible. The first one is called a prayer of blessing. The purpose of a prayer of blessing is simply to worship and praise God. Now it's called a prayer of blessing because you are speaking a blessing to God. You're saying, bless you, God. I'm going, to, I'm going to speak well of you. I'm going to say things about you. A prayer of blessing is a prayer that expresses our heart of worship and praise to Yahweh our God for who he is. Now, that's the key. If you guys want to underline that, the key to this type of prayer is you are telling God who he is. You're, you're saying, I acknowledge these things about you. And the prayer can contain any aspect of God's attributes, his character, his actions in history, or his promises. I want to look at uh, two examples of a prayer of blessing. And I have a number of scriptures uh, written down below for reference. If you guys want to look them up. We're not going to look at all of them. We're going to look at just uh, maybe a sample of one or two per type. Um, I do have to say there is a typo under the prayer of petition. This should be Daniel chapter 9. We'll, uh, I'll correct that when we get there as well. I just said, uh, don't forget. All right, so in 1 Chronicles 29, there's a prayer of King David recorded here. It says, so David blessed Yahweh in the sight of the whole assembly. And David said, you are blessed forever and ever, Yahweh, the God of Israel, our Father. Yours, Yahweh, is the greatness, the power, the glory, the victory, and the majesty. For all that is in the heavens and in the earth is yours. Yours is the kingdom, Yahweh. And you are exalted as head above all. Both riches and honor come from you, and you rule over all. And in your hand is power and might, and it is in your hand to make great and to give strength to all. And now, our God, we thank you and praise your glorious name. 
What are some of the things that David is saying about who God is? Anybody point any of them out? Yeah, so David is saying, you know, bless you, Yahweh. David is blessing Yahweh. But what about Yahweh himself that David says here? He says that God is great and powerful. Yep. Yours is the greatness, meaning you basically, you possess, you possess greatness. You possess power, glory, victory, and majesty. Yeah, question, Tim. No, it's not a question. No. Oh, you, you want to point one out? Yeah, what's yeah. the one you see? Uh, uh, both riches and honor come from you. Yeah. And you rule over all. Yahweh is the source of riches and honor. Deborah. He's exalted. He's above all. Exalted. Yep. There's one other one, I think, one other big one in here. Anybody see it? Thank you. Uh... Well, we thank you and praise. We give, we give you thanks and praise. But it's not really saying anything about Yahweh, necessarily. Is it his rulership? When it says you rule over all? You rule over all is similar to exalted, but there's something in this here, this line here, that we're missing. Okay, see it? Yeah, Deborah? Kingdom is yours. Kingdom is yours, along with yeah. everything in creation. <laughs> all of creation is... Yours. It all belongs to you, Yahweh. So this is a very classic example of a prayer of blessing. David doesn't really go into saying anything else, asking anything else, or, or anything. He's literally just acknowledging who God is, who Yahweh is, and, and some of the things about him, some attributes, um, some of his actions, things, everything has come from him. Uh, he is above all. He owns the kingdom. He's blessed forever. Um, he has, he has uh, strength and might. And he can make people powerful. These are, just, these are things just about Yahweh. The next example, Nehemiah. With the rebuilding of the wall of Jerusalem. This is one of the last, this is one of the last writings in the New Testament from Nehemiah here. This is the, the prayer. Stand up and bless Yahweh your God, from everlasting to everlasting. Blessed be your glorious name, which is exalted above all blessing and praise. You are Yahweh, even you alone. You've made heaven the heaven of heavens, with all their army, the earth and all things that are on it, the seas and all that is in them, and you preserve them all. The army of heaven worships you. You are Yahweh, the God who chose Abram and brought him out of Ur of the Chaldees, and gave him the name of Abraham, and found his heart faithful before you, and cut a covenant with him, to give the land of the Canaanite, the Hittite, the Amorite, and the Perizzite, and the Jebusite, and the Girgashite, to give it to his seed, and have performed your words, for you are righteous. Give me some examples of uh, a few of the things that are pointed out about Yahweh in this prayer. He is righteous. Righteous, right there, right in the end. All right, so you and Deborah can, can uh, pause. I'm going to ask a few other people for some input. Uh, remind me your name? Hannah. Hannah, yes. Which one do you see? Uh, he made the heavens, the heavens with all their army. Yep, yep. And the earth and yeah. all the things that are on it. And the seas. Yep. And then there's one more thing that, they, that he says about it. You want to finish it off? Uh, he made them, but he also preserves, preserves them. Yeah, he sustains them. Yeah. You never said your name. Uh, oh, sorry, my name is Jared. <laughs> did, I, did, I, did I not introduce myself? My bad. I, bet I, uh, I did that this morning, I guess, in my class, and I kind of forgot this is different. <laughs> I'm Jerry Weirwell. I'm from Albany, New York. Um, I passed through with Sean Finnegan, 
at Living Hope Community Church in Albany, New York. I'm a full-time Bible translator with the REV Bible Translation with Spirit and Truth Ministry, and I'm here to lead you guys in this <coughs> workshop on prayer. Okay. <laughs> Thanks for, thanks for that. I, I apologize. Yes, okay. yeah, I have a question. Does that mean all of the text that you're citing is already? Yes. Okay. Yep. This is from the Revised English Version Bible. Uh, so, other people who can notate something about Yahweh in this prayer. What about something from history that he's acknowledging God did? He chose Abram. Chose Abram. Thank you, Michael. Yep. And what did he, he chose Abram, and then uh, he kind of expounds on that whole account here and elaborates on it a little bit. So we can, I give you a lump the rest of it under that, that heading pretty much. He talks about what he did with Abraham, the promise he gave to Abraham, the covenant he cut with Abraham, of which that all relates um, to the new covenant that we're a part of, as Paul talks about in the letter to the Galatians that the children of Abraham are not the biological descendants that inherit the promises, but it's the children of faith, the descendants of faith, of which you are, who are heirs of the promises. And therefore, this covenant that God made with Abraham, we are, we are heirs of that covenant. And that's part of the new covenant. So. All right, let's take a, a moment. So take, uh, get your little card here. Prayer of blessing. Now, what I, I'm going to do the prompt here. This is the prompt. I want you guys to, to fill in here under the blessing at least. Just give me three items. Give me three items that you could list after this prompt under the prayer of blessing. I'll give you guys about 30 seconds, okay? Everybody needs to have at least, at least one. You need to have at least one because... We're going to go around right now, and I want you guys to, to fill in the prompt with at least one of the items on your list. So, uh, Joseph, we'll start off with you. <coughs> God, you are? I've been an amazing creator. Amazing creator. Loving. And who would you name, please? Pain. Pain. Yeah. Say it again. Loving. Loving. God, you are? Holy. Holy? Holy. Yep. God of peace. God, you are you got you are a God of peace. Come on, God of peace. Yep. Thank you. Forgive. God, you are forgiving. Let's just keep going here. All powerful. All powerful. I, I put omnipotent. Omnipotent. Just another word for all powerful. <laughs> I, I just put perfect. God, you are perfect. Michael. Lord of all. Lord of all. And uh, our provider. Provider. Uh, okay. You're our hope. Cool. Righteous. Righteous. Creator of all things. Creator of all things. Marvelous. Marvelous. God, you are marvelous. Full of grace. Fantastic. All, all good things to say about God. All right, let's go to the second category. Prayer of Thanksgiving. Now, we probably are... are we're probably familiar with this type of prayer. It's not maybe the most common, but it's very, very common. We do this probably uh, every day, most likely. Well, what's, what's a common type of prayer of thanksgiving that most of us are involved in on a daily basis? Eating. Yes, partaking of food. The food we give God thanks for the meal. Yep. Uh, there's a couple examples. Uh, there's both direct and indirect examples of prayers of thanksgiving in Scripture. Here's one that's a direct example from Jesus in Matthew 11. At that time, Jesus answered and said, I thank you, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that you hid these things from the wise and understanding and revealed them to little children. Yes, Father, because this was well-pleasing in your sight. Jesus is giving thanks to God, calling God his Father, and giving him thanks for this thing that God did. God hid, basically, the, the spiritual wisdom 
from the wise, the worldly, from those who are worldly wise, you know, wise, wise in the world, and have understanding, just like the philosophers and stuff. And he revealed them to little children, people with a with a heart like a child. Yes, Father, because this was well pleasing in your sight. So this, this is simple, just kind of like a, a very simple one-liner example. Uh, we can get a, a little bit longer one. Now this is an indirect prayer where Paul is basically saying his prayer to the, the Corinthians. This is the letter from the first Corinthians. Uh, it's the first letter to the Corinthians. So he's telling them what he prays. So it's not a uh, direct quotation of his prayer. He's expressing his prayer here. He says, I thank my God always for you because of the grace of God that was given to you in union with Christ Jesus. Because in union with him, you were enriched in everything, in all speech and all knowledge, just as the testimony about the Christ was confirmed in you, so that you are not trailing behind the others in any gift, as you are eagerly awaiting the appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ, who will also confirm you to the end, blameless in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. So Paul's prayer for the Corinthians is that he said, I thank my God. I give thanks to God. So if you want to turn that around, he's saying, God, I thank you for giving your grace to the Corinthians in union with Christ Jesus. And then he kind of expounds on why he's thankful. He's thankful because this is, this is what that grace then has enabled for them. That they then have, uh, they were enriched in speech and knowledge and that they are not like lagging behind, but they're, uh, they have the hope of Christ's return. And Christ, when he returns, will confirm them, blameless. So he's just kind of explaining why he's thankful. So you have the component where you say that what you're thankful for, and then you can actually tell God reasons. You tell God why you're thankful for what he's done. You don't just have to say, thank you, blank. Thank you, blank. Thank you, blank. You can, you can, you can tell God why you have thanks you know, in your heart for him. Okay. Alright, so with your card here in the prayer of thanksgiving, uh, this is kind of going to be the prompt. You're going to tell God, thank you for, and then something. Now, I didn't give you guys a lot of room to expound on the reason for your thankfulness, but just consider it implicit that um, when you go out to pray here in a little bit, uh, consider that to be part of your prayer of thanksgiving. Of just elaborate to God why you have this attitude of thanksgiving toward him. Well, let's take 30 seconds. Uh, try and give me at least three items under the prayer of thanksgiving category. And then we will go around and we will share examples of our prayer of thanksgiving. Now, I should have done this before <clears throat> looking at the examples, but just to go over a little blurb here on prayer of thanksgiving. The Thanksgiving, uh, prayer of Thanksgiving is a prayer that acknowledges how God has blessed us and others. In giving thanks to prayer, we are expressing our heart of gratitude and appreciation for what God, uh, to God for what he has done. So that's the idea. All right, so we have our prompt. We're going to, let's go back <clears throat> in reverse order. So God, thank you for, uh, um, so, uh, Bailey, right? Yes, okay, Bailey, start with you. Thank you for 
Michael, how you doing? Thank you for family. Hand on a second hand on. Thank you for loving me even in my mistakes. Loving you even so you can give a reason. Yeah, you want to do wrong. Yeah. Good. Isaac. Um, I said I thank him for all the athletic opportunities that he's given to me. Yeah. The leaders he has provided to guide us on our journey. The what? The leaders he has provided us to guide us on our journey. Thank God for your leaders. That's great. That's straight from scripture. That's good. Thank you. Um, for your church family that provides love and accountability. Remind me of one more time. Stephanie. Stephanie. Yes, more um, yours. Patience. Thank you for his patience. His with patience with you. about the prayer of thanksgiving is that and I mentioned it in the explanation it can be you can give thanks for what God has done in your life but also in others and not just in others lives in the world at large you know I don't know Ian if you had in mind political leaders or not or spiritual leaders in the church or what kind of leaders you had in mind but there's, uh, there's a, a broader context of, of what we can give God thanks for. It can be for, for any action God has done that uh, relates to, uh, it can be the past, but a lot of it is mainly with the present. In the present. But uh, with regarding like, God thanks for being faithful in this way, because that has now present you know, ramifications or present, you know, Prevents, presents, presents an opportunity, you know, for Isaac with the uh, athletic opportunities. Now, some of those maybe God has been working in you for a long time to bring you to a certain place. You know, so it's it, a lot of it has to do with with our life, but the way in the past God has done things as well to bring us to the present moment. All right, let's do the third. <coughs> Excuse me. Third is this category. is this uh, is this one a little bit dangerous if we're giving? In the fact that sometimes we give God credit for things that may or may, may or may not be His doing. Well, uh, I mean, <laughs> it's hard. It's hard to say with definitiveness. Yeah. You know, that if you ask me, how many places do you know without any any doubt at all that it literally was the hand of God? I said I very few times in my life when I have zero doubt that it's the hand of God. Most of the time, I know God was involved in it, but I don't. I don't know to what extent. Right. You know. But yeah, I mean, yeah. I think it's to me and in Scripture, I think erring on the side of of uh, being overly generous with acknowledging God in your life is the safer side to be on than being too uh, scrupulous about it. So I think that, that would probably be the principle of advice. Good question. Though. So the third category, guys. Uh, third category. Prayer of petition. Prayer of petition. Purpose. To ask God to be gracious to us and provide what we need. Prayer of petition is likely the most well-known type of prayer. Petition is simply a request. That's, uh, that's what prayer of petition, the word petition means to, to make a request or to ask something. When we pray and petition God, we're asking for God to give or do something that we need from Him. Our requests should be according to His will for our good and well-being. So there I put a little, a little uh, some boundaries on that one there, Joseph. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Sometimes uh, when we say, you know, pray, pray to God and ask Him for what you need, we as humans, we have a very blurry definition of what we truly need. So when we ask God for things, it's not wrong to ask God for special blessings that are not part of food, clothing, you know, and shelter and the bare necessities of life. We can ask God to bless us in certain categories and circumstances. In those places, though, God is not obligated to answer our prayer in those cases. 
But when it comes to our physical needs and things like that, you know, God says he's faithful and he will provide what we do need. Right. An example of a prayer of petition. This comes from Psalm 140. Um, presumably uh, authorship uh, of David. Um, but it says here, deliver me, O Yahweh. So implicit in this is, is his request here. He's asking God to do something. He's saying, Yahweh, will you deliver me? So deliver me, O Yahweh, from evil people. Guard me from the man of violent deeds, those who devise evil things in their heart. Every day they stir up wars. They have sharpened their tongue like a serpent. A viper's poison is under their lips. Selah. Keep me, O Yahweh, from the hands of the wicked person. Guard me from the man of violent deeds. Those who devise how to trip up my feet. The proud have hidden a trap for me and cords. They have spread a net by the path. They have set snares for me. Selah. What is, what is David asking really from God in like a broad context? Protection. Protection. Yeah. He has enemies, these people that are evil, and they want to harm him. They have plans of evil deeds, and also looks like slander probably. They're sharpening their tongue. So idiomatic way of saying that they're, they're going to say things that are hurtful, harm, you know, harmful. <clears throat> the poison, the viper's poison is under their lips. What they say is toxic. And that uh, they are laying traps. These people are arrogant and proud. They've laid traps for him and spread nets and set snares, all of this kind of like hunter imagery. He's the prey. And he's getting hunted by these people. He's asking to be delivered and kept, essentially protected from what these people are plotting. I think that's well within the will of God, is to ask for God to be our protector, especially from evil. It's a prayer that you know, Jesus prayed to deliver us you know, from evil, from, and from evil one. Uh, one other prayer of petition here. Daniel chapter 9, so this is the one that I mentioned, it's a typo on your page if you want to correct the scripture reference. Daniel 9, now therefore, O our God, hear the prayer of your servant and his petitions, and for your own sake, Lord, cause your face to shine on your sanctuary that is desolate. O my God, incline your ear and hear. Open your eyes and see our desolations, and the city that is called by your name. For we are not presenting our petitions before you based on our righteousness, but based on your great mercy. O oh Lord, hear. O oh Lord, forgive. Lord, listen and act. For your own sake, O oh my God, do not delay, because your city and your people are called by your name. Daniel here is praying a prayer, asking for God to do certain things. What is something, what's something that he's asking God to do? Let's just point it out real quick. What's the first thing he, he, he's asking God to do? He's just asking God to listen to him. It's a little bit rhetorical. We know, you know God, hear, God hears the prayers of his people. But uh, what, else, what else is he asking for God? Shine upon them. Shine upon them, yep. Uh, he wants God to Pay attention. look at what their situation is, yeah. Look at how they're suffering. And that, and uh, he also wants, he's, at, he's asking God, he acknowledges their sinfulness, he's asking for forgiveness, he wants God to hear and then do something. And he doesn't want, he doesn't want God to wait. And he, he, he's looking for God to do something now. 
not long time in the future. He's asking for God to intervene immediately according to God's will. But this is the difference between the last two here, though. Petition, so the last two are petitions, but the, the prayer petition is for yourself. You know, uh, Daniel's praying this here, and he's, he's part of the people that are suffering. He's part of, he's part of uh, the city. Uh, he's part of the Israelites, of which are being uh, humiliated by the invasion of the foreign nations of like Babylon, specifically here, and uh, the city of Jerusalem is uh, been ransacked, and he's, he's, he's part of that whole picture, and he's the one suffering. So <clears throat> his petition relates to him, but I'll also to a broader to the, the Jewish people in, in, at large. But a uh, prayer petition is really personal. It's, it's for you. It's for something that you are asking God in your life. You need God. You need God for something, and you're asking that from him. That's going to differ from the prayer intercession. So uh, let's let's take a moment here. Here's the prompt. <coughs> so you're going to say, God, I ask you for, and you know, maybe that's a for. God, I ask you, you can say to do, or I ask you to give, or I ask you for. Uh, you can fill in whatever following clause you want. But God, I ask you for. Take a moment, go ahead and try and give me at least three three answers to that prompt. If I have at least one, <coughs> at least one answer to offer. Now if uh, if your answer is really personal, then please don't feel obligated to, to say that. Choose a different one. Well one that you'd be willing to share with the group. <coughs> uh, let's go back around, start from this side with you, Joseph. So uh, God, I ask you for I'll go to heart and see if you're in them first. Uh, courage to you. spread your word. Courage to you spread your word. Okay. Mm -hmm. so one more thing is to uh, shine in the heart, uh, present the opportunities to uh, share with you. Know, <coughs> and don't tell me. <coughs> <laughs> Shining his light through my future career. I asked him for the protection of my teammates in and out of season. Michael? Uh, strength to deal with my temptation when it comes. the last category and then as I get you guys out you can do some of your own personal prayer. <clears throat> prayer of intercession purpose is to ask God for the needs of others on their behalf. A prayer of intercession is a prayer on behalf of others. It's a petition for God to be gracious toward or give to someone else according to their need. Prayer for others can be general or specific depending upon your knowledge uh, or the nature of the request. Uh, sometimes we are privy to certain things about a circumstance or about another person's life, and we pray for those things, depending upon our 
degree of detail in, in our knowledge. But sometimes we don't know much. We just know somebody's hurting. We know, we know somebody somebody needs the Lord, and we don't know much about it. And for our prayer, for them, our inter our prayer of intercession will be very general. So it really depends upon how acquainted you are with the nature of the request for their need. In uh, John chapter 17, <clears throat> praying a famous prayer of Jesus here. Jesus uh, tells God, I have given them your word, and the world has hated them because they are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. I am not asking that you take them out of the world, <clears throat> but that you keep them safe from the wicked one. They are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. Make them holy by the truth. Your word is truth. What is Jesus asking God for? Protect them. To protect them, keep them safe. <clears throat> keep them safe from the wicked one. And what's the other thing he's asking God for? <clears throat> Make them holy. Yep. Sanctify them. By the truth. This, this is just one part of a, a much longer prayer in John 17, and, and actually there's uh, quite a number of different combinations of the different prayer types in Jesus' prayer, often called the High Priestly Prayer, here in John 17. Uh, I recommend you read the whole thing. It, it is a magnificent prayer. And uh, another example here in Philippians, Paul, the apostle, writing to the church in Philippi, and this is a, an indirect prayer, sort of, uh, where he's telling them what he's praying. He says, I keep praying this, that your love will continue to increase more and more in connection with knowledge and every kind of insight, so that you can determine the things that are best in order to be pure and without offense until the day of Christ, being filled with the fruit of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ to the glory and praise of God. So he's, Paul is praying this for the Philippians. And he's praying, he's basically saying, you know, God, I ask that, your, that you would give the Philippians more and more love. Love will continue to increase more and more. And that comes in connection with knowledge and every kind of insight. And then there's an explanation for, for why he feels that that, why he's asking God for that on their behalf. And he could, this uh, participial phrase here could be that they also are filled with the fruit of righteousness. So he wants them to grow and increase in love, in connection with knowledge, so they can then be filled with the fruit of righteousness. And that then is to the praise and glory of God. So that's the prayer of intercession. It is your asking on behalf of someone else for God to do something or give something to that person in, uh, in who's in need. So uh, this is the prompt. <coughs> God, on behalf of blank, I ask that you. So 30 seconds and uh, come up with at least, uh, hopefully three, at least three, and then we'll have you guys share one. Right. This last category here. Uh, God, on behalf of blank, go ahead and say whoever the prayer is for, and then what you're asking God for. So, Lydia. Uh, I ask for, on behalf of my mom, I ask for healing. Okay. Bailey.
On behalf of our world leaders, as to bring peace and show mercy to those around the world. Back to you, Deborah. Um, on behalf of uh, my friends and family, um, we hope that we find peace in my friends and family to the world. And no one can help me it. And uh, for those that aren't in a place that they can find faith. Um, on behalf of a friend that had lost her son, just by comfort, peace, and that they look to God and not turn away. Um, on behalf of <coughs> my kids and their friends that uh, during their life transitions, growing and moving and changing and whatnot, that they keep God-centered and keep their relationship with Him strong. Ethan, on behalf of On behalf of your grandma, you're asking God yeah. to give her help. Yeah. Okay, sorry, I must have misunderstood that. Cool. Yep. Yeah. I did it on behalf of the church, so we encourage each other. That our love grows more and more, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's great. All right. Uh, great job, guys. Um, we're going to go outside now for the next five to ten minutes. Uh, I want to just go out here. I want you guys to just go find a place, sit down, take your uh, take everything with you, but your your card. Uh, I'm going to encourage you to just pray the rest of the prayers on the different four categories. Um, I don't care where you sit. You can even sit near people, but no talking, no no verbal talking. This is you're praying between you and God, and so. Please pray silently and no, no talking between each other. And we have lunch at 1 o'clock, so uh, I hope this has helped you guys understand prayer a little bit more and get to go have a little time to pray together now.